Okay, so okay, so everybody, salam alaikum, and uh, good, mo good morning here and in uh, in FAO in Rome, but certainly good afternoon in Bangladesh. Uh, you have seen the agenda. Uh, the opening session will be uh, done by the the two gentlemen from FAO and from BBS. Uh, maybe the FAO. The assistant representative of FAO, would you like to start with your welcome address? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Good afternoon and good morning, colleagues at Rome. Uh, my name is Noor Khandakar. I've been working as an assistant FAO representative program with the FAO Bangladesh. So nothing to say, just welcome all the training participants. And this training is being organized based on the request from the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. And uh, thank you for the government departments for nominating their officers for this training. And I would like to uh, request all the training participants kindly uh, listen the lectures, ask questions to enrich your knowledge. And also I would like to thank our HQ colleagues uh, for, your, for acceptance uh, to organize this training program and the resource persons. And thanks to the, our colleague, Dr. Amirul, for coordinating with the HQ. I wish a, a successful training. Thank you very much. That's all from my side. OK, thank you, Dr. Noor. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Alauddin, as that Director of Agriculture Wing, if you want to say a few words of welcome, please. Uh, good afternoon and good morning in Rome. And assalamu alaikum. Uh, I have nothing to say, just to say hello and uh, welcome, uh, like Nurway. Um, thank you all. Thank you, FU Rome and FU Headquarter and uh, FU Bangladesh uh, to arrange such a program for BBS, and uh, which will help us uh, learning many things about the SDG indicator. And I also want to thanks to uh, your team, Mr. Naman, Mr. Paridun, and uh, other team member uh, for uh, giving us time uh, to deliver your SDG indicator 2.3.1 and 3.2. And also uh, thanks to Mr. Amirul uh, to cooperate with us and uh, for this training. And I also hope that our participants will follow the uh, norms of the training. You have uh, said earlier, how can we ask the question and which way you have sent the norms of the uh, training. I think, uh, I hope that our participants will follow the norms. And I also hope that this training will be fruitful for us and we will work together in future uh, for this indicator. And thank you again for uh, arranging in this training. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Mr. Alauddin. And uh, now we go to the, introduction and objectives of the training. But before we start talking about the objectives, I give the floor to Mr. Faridun, who will be the facilitator for this training all the three days. This means that he will be the one dealing with all the logistical and the technical issues. If any participant has a difficulty, please contact him and he will try to is best to, to help you. So, uh, Mr. Faridun, please talk about the rules of the virtual meeting. Uh, sorry, uh, may I interrupt? May I interrupt? Yes, yes, yes please. Uh, please, if you show the participant list, uh, those who are not uh, joining, we can communicate with them. But uh, we are not seeing the participant yes. list. I have and... sent the participant list to uh, uh, Dr. Islam. No, I, I think he 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 is out now. In the screen, in the screen in Zoom. In the platform. screen, okay, okay. In the Zoom platform. Okay, uh, Doctor uh, Mr. Faridun, can you show that? Okay, let me. Uh, uh, Mr. Alaudin, you are uh, now. Okay, I think you are still attendees. Let me. 
I will prompt you to panelist. So you will be a panelist now. And after some time, you will see uh, the list of attendees. When you go to participants and you will push attendees, you should see the uh, list of attendees. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Can you also send it to Mr. Kamrul Islam? So you should make uh, Mr. Kamrul Islam also as a panelist. Okay. Did it already, I think. Uh, did it. No, no, no. Uh, I haven't done it. I think. No, I, I see him there as a panelist. Really? Yeah. So, Mr. Kamrul, uh, can you see the list of uh, participants? Mr. Kamrul Islam, now you are uh, a panelist. You should see yeah. the attendees and uh, yeah, you, you will identify who is here or who is uh, missing. I request also to include uh, Dr. Noor Ahmed Khandakar for the time being. No, oh. let, him, let him know. Let him be the panelist. Who, who can you say? Our assistant of AFO, Noor Ahmed Khandakar. Noor, Dr. Noor, Noor. Yeah. Dr. Noor is in uh, a panelist. Okay, okay. Uh, no, Faridun, uh, Dr. Noor is among the, the, the participants. He's not a panelist at the moment. Okay, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, sometimes it works very slow. Yeah. Now, I don't know what's wrong with this. Uh, I'm trying to promote him to panelists, but uh, system doesn't allow me to do this. So. Uh, yeah, shall we continue? So we have uh, two panelists for the moment uh, who can check the list of attendees. We have Dr. Kamrul. Uh, Dr. Amirul, yeah, Alauddin. Uh, Mr. Kamrul, can you check, please? Yes. Sorry, we are not seeing Mr. Kamrul. Is there, Mr. Alauddin is not still there. Sorry, Mr. Sorry, we are not uh, seeing the participant list. Mr. Alauddin, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I cannot promote you to panelist. Maybe there is some limitation for panelists. Ah, no, now you should uh, will no, be joining uh, webinar as panelist. Also, also, please, you know, as I indicated, yes, sir, I, I think what he is asking is where can he see the list of uh, participants. Sorry? Where can he find the list of participants? Okay, you, he needs to go to participants and push attendees, which is on the right side. Oh, yeah. And the attendees, there are, there are now 27. You can see all of them here. Yeah, uh, Mr. Alauddin, you are also a panelist. You should go to participants and push attendees. Oh, well, thank you. Now we got it. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you included Dr. Nur Khandukar? Assistant FAO program, FAO Bangladesh. No, uh, he is saying that he had some technical problem adding more panelists. That's why the assistant director or uh, assistant representative was not among the panelists for the moment. Yeah, Mr. Nur Khandakir, I don't know, but uh, it's I cannot make him panelist. I don't know why. But, but we have already three people to monitor this, right? Yes, from, please. From your please. side, I think it should be okay. fine, uh, Amirul. We have uh, Amirul. No, it's okay, have, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. If so it's okay, shall, can I continue? Shall we continue? Please, please continue. Dr. Alidun? Okay, go ahead, uh, Faridun. Okay, uh, salam alaikum, dear participants. Uh, once again, I would like to brief you about some uh, rules uh, of the meeting for uh, today's webinar. 
and uh, please be attentive. Uh, okay, uh, it's preferably if you use your laptops rather than your uh, mobile phones or, plant, uh, or uh, tablets. Uh, please make yourself comfortable and uh, please select some silent place. You know, the uh, additional sounds uh, do not disturb you during the webinar. Uh, if you have any additional applications opened, please close your applications. But, and uh, if you see that uh, there is some problems, uh, if you are the, in the, the panelist, you should turn off your video. Uh, it will save some, uh, um, let's say, uh, megabits uh, or kilobits of your internet. Uh, it is proposed to update and your Zoom before uh, the webinar. Every time you should check the updates and download the new version of the application. Preferably, if you have the headset uh, or earphones, please use them. Uh, and <clears throat> session from the beginning until the end will be recorded. So if you want, if you don't want to show your uh, video, you should turn off your video and uh, uh, talk without the video. Uh, please, every time uh, after your uh, after your speech, mute uh, your uh, your sound. If you have any question, this is relates to, uh, to attendees, please push the Q&A part and write your question. Or there is, another way, uh, there is another method to ask the question is by pushing the right hand. If we will see that you have raised your hand, we will give you a floor so you will be able to, uh, to provide your question. Uh, it's preferred that you uh, properly write your name. And uh, for the time, uh, the team will ask the questions, the quiz Zoom. Please ensure that you reply all the questions. Uh, we are planning to do this, this quiz uh, at the end uh, of the webinar on the third day. It will be some evaluation questions. So please reply to this evaluation questions. If you have any questions, as I said, uh, please push uh, the Q&A or raise your hand. And uh, in the chat, please send the message only to me if you need help, if you will need any kind of the help related to Zoom, yeah? And uh, if you have any technical issues. As I said before, uh, this, uh, vir this virtual meeting with virtual training webinar will be recorded. And uh, at the end of the webinar, at the end of the third day, we will provide you, Mr. Naman Keita, will provide you all the supporting documentation. This is the PowerPoint presentation and other uh, necessary documents. Um, thank you very much and uh, good luck to everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Okay, so. Uh... Uh, anybody has any very, very quick and short question, technical question regarding how to, to handle this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, remote training? If not, we just go to the next part of the presentations. Okay, so I, I think there is no, no additional question. So we go to the the next item of the agenda, which is the introduction, the objectives of this uh, training. Uh, before that, I would really like to thank all the people from BBS. I see that uh, initially we were thinking that it would be from BBS, but we saw that also the Minister of Agriculture sent uh, some participants and the Minister of Food also sent some participants, which uh, means that uh, there is a, a very good interest in this uh, training. So we are very happy with that. And we accept that we'll have a very successful uh, presentation uh, training. And I'm trying to open now my PowerPoint.
Okay, I don't know if you can see it. Everybody can see my presentation? Yes. Okay. So, there it is. Okay, so this is a very, very short one just to, 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 to introduce this training and what are the objectives and uh, what we expect at the end of this training. So just a few words about the background of this uh, sustainable development goals. They were adopted at the UN summit in September 2015. Uh, the, the title of this summit was Transforming Our World. Uh, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And during this uh, political, uh, high, high level political meeting, they adopted 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, and among those 17, there is a goal number two, which is ending hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. So that's, uh, the, 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 the goal which is of interest to us for this training. Further down, this goal has been broken down into eight targets, including target 2.3. The target 2.3 is to double agriculture productivity and income of small, small scale food producers. Now, you know that all this process has been started with the political uh, people, but when it comes to uh, monitoring those goals and targets, you need to talk to the statisticians and you need to translate these political uh, statements into actionable statistical uh, objectives and tools and the indicators. So that's where the, this indicator two 3.1 and 2.3.2 comes in. So after several technical meetings of the interagency group of the UN, uh, it was decided to, to select these two indicators, 231 and 232, in order to monitor the target 2.3. But I think the next presentation by Jacob will provide a more detail on the indicators 2.3.1 and 2.3.2. Uh, again, the UN has decided that uh, some of the institutions are custodians of a, a number of indicators. FAO is a custodian of uh, 21 indicators, including indicator 2.3.1 and 2.3.2. And uh, once you, you have defined the indicators, the, the issue is to define a detailed methodology that can be accepted by tools, by all, and that can be used to compile the indicator. So in 20, after several uh, discussions, meetings, and uh, consultation with member countries, in 2018, indicators 2.3.1 and 2.3.2 have been reclassified as tier two indicators, which mean that an internationally agreed methodology is available for the data collection at the required levels of disaggregation, computation, and reporting. So this is a very, very important step because without a clear methodology, uh, you cannot compile the, 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 the indicators. So that's why the focus of this training will be on the methodology to, to compile indicator 231 and 232. So once the methodology is defined, FO has been working with the countries for the all 21 indicators that has been reached the level of chair two to try to build the capacity in the countries in order to collect, uh, monitor and compile the, the indicators 231 and 232. Because at the, at the end, this should be done by the countries themselves. So uh, the capacity building is a key, key element in the process of monitoring of these indicators. The, the issue is that, you know, FAO has a long experience in uh, capacity building, but with the, the unforeseen uh, COVID pandemic, uh, this resulted in the restrictions in uh, international travels so that the traditional way of doing capacity building could not be used anymore. 
So that's why instead of face-to-face -face training sessions, and thanks to this uh, advance in technology like Zoom and uh, other platform, it is now possible to do the virtual training, doing it remotely. And uh, so this is the new method with all the challenges that it goes with, of course, we have seen this morning. And also, certainly, we, we cannot enjoy seeing each other uh, physically, but at least uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an effective way of uh, providing the training also. So basically, the aim of this training is to build capacity in the national uh, statistical offices on the methodology, data collection, tools, and reporting mechanism for SDG. 231 and 232. Specifically, the objectives of the trainings are four. One is to build capacity of the staff in Bangladesh. And uh, as I said in the beginning, initially we were thinking of uh, BBS only, but now it's uh, expanded to the Minister of Agriculture and the Minister of Food on the methodology, compilation, and inter interpretation of uh, 231 and 232 to introduce the tools for data collection, including an overview of uh, possible data sources. Uh, the third day we'll talk about that. And to discuss the available micro data useful to compute and report on indicators 231 and 232. Uh, so this, initially we were hoping that we could have a concrete micro data level of, uh, for these indicators from Bangladesh. But uh, we, we thought that maybe it's better to, to do the indicator and they take some uh, over country data as examples. And then after that, maybe at another time to see, to, to, to support Bangladesh in using their own micro data because it required micro data from holding level micro data, not the aggregated data. We need the data at the micro level, the holding level. So we'll see uh, if this kind of data is available in Bangladesh. And if not, what are the gaps and how we can uh, work together using the tools that FAO is developing, the agris and others, in order to fill the gap, the data gap, so that uh, the indicators can be calculated. The outputs are, to, are two, basically. Uh, it was 37, but now we need to correct this. I think I counted 41. So we will have 41 staff trained on the methodology and tools for SDG 231 and 232. And hopefully at the end of this training also, if we can agree on a short uh, action plan to summarize the actual situation regarding the availability of the data and to identify the gaps and to agree on how we can fill those gaps, data gaps, in order, in order to be able to compute the indicators. So this is uh, basically the, the, the purpose of this uh, training. And the main points of the agenda, I, I will not go through all of them. You have seen them in the, in the program. So basically, we'll have, after all this introduction, we have two main thing, two, three main part of the training. One is to define the small scale food producer. Uh, this will be done today. The second one with a practical exercise also. So we'll make a presentation and practical exercise. The second is the methodology and steps for computing the two indicators with a practical exercise also. And the third one will be the data sources and questionnaires and data items that are needed to compute the, the two indicators. Uh, as I said, at the end, we hope that uh, also we will have uh, hear from uh, our colleagues from uh, BBS on what are the surveys going on now, what are the data gaps, and how we can work together in order to fill in these data gaps. So more or less, this is uh, the objectives of this training. And uh, I am sure that we'll have a very successful training. And uh, if you have any technical or uh, logistic problems, we are all here. Myself, I am a Naman Keita, I am a retiree from FAO. I am acting as a senior consultant. 
Uh, in addition, we have uh, Jacob, who is a statistician also at the office of the chief statistician uh, in uh, Rome, in FA headquarters in Rome. We have uh, Aida Khalil, who is also a statistician in the same office, office of the chief statistician. We have two other colleagues who are not present today because they are working on the, the practical exercises. So we have uh, Audrey Sanu, uh, who is also a statistician, and we have uh, Max Chang, who is also a statistician. Now to support all this training, we have, uh, of course, you know already, uh, Ms. Faridun Akino, who is also from the Office of the Chief Statistician. So this is from our side, uh, what we have, and uh, I will stop here so that we save some time and uh, start with the, the, the training itself. Thank you very much. And now I think I give, unless there is any urgent question, I give the floor to Jacob. Okay, good morning. Salam alaikum, everyone. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Good. Uh, so my presentation is very short. We are, uh, I mean, uh, a little bit late. Uh, due to different uh, technical issues. Therefore, I will try to, to save some time from, from my side from this presentation. It's going to be very brief and short. It's just introduction, introducing the, these two indicators that we are really interested in uh, for this training, 2.31 and 2.332. Maybe before going to that one, I mean, Naman started you know, talking about this issue of you know, custodian agencies. I know, uh, as you know, we have about 231 indicators uh, to, to measure these SDGs, where the goals of uh, the 17 goals of the SDGs, and the FAO is responsible or uh, custodian for 21 of the SDG indicators, which mainly uh, revolve around six of the goals uh, in hunger, uh, gender equality, clean water, food loss and waste, uh, life below water, and uh, forests. So uh, about 21 indicators, which is about 9% of the total indicators, which is, uh, I mean, compared to the MDGs, it is, it is uh, uh, really a large amount of uh, indicators is, 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 uh, is become a responsibility of FAO, FAO compared to the MDGs, which shows that, you know, uh, we showed that, you know, the, the, the issue of, uh, Agriculture and the, the mandate of FAO in terms of sustainable development is becoming very clear. That's what it, 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 this, this shows. So, as a custodian agency, what do we do? Well, I mean, as I said, these two under certain indicators are divided among different agencies to be to be to be responsible as a custodian. So, the first thing that as a custodian agency that we should be doing is uh, develop the methodology. You know, lead, lead, lead the methodology development and documentation of the, the indicators. Uh, for these 21 indicators, we all, uh, we, um, FAO was able to develop all the methodological developments. Therefore, all indicate, all the 21 indicators are uh, either tier one or tier two. Therefore, there is no any indicator under FAO custodian, uh, custodianship without you know, methodological development. Therefore, in the minimum, it is tier two, and the maximum is we have you know, started you know, generating the data as well, therefore tier one. We also, uh, as a custodian agency, we are uh, responsible to support the statistical capacity of countries to generate and disseminate data. That's what we are trying to do uh, with 231232 today, because there should be a great capacity at the country level to make sure that the data, the indicators are generated. We also try to help countries collect data, ensure their compatibility, quality, consistency, and then Finally, as a custodian agency, we uh, contribute to monitoring progress at global level in, in particular, but also at regional and national level. Having said that, even though we, we, we really play a great role in terms of capacity technical assistance, the driving, uh, I mean, the, 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 the driving seat or the countries are going to, should be at the driving seat in terms of generating data. Uh, required for uh, measuring these SDG in indicators. That's why we are trying to, to build this thing. 
and specifically this uh, uh, issue of uh, 231232 is is part of uh, a goal too to end hunger achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture and under goal two as you know we have different goals and this indicator of 231232 is uh, basically uh, focused on target 2.3 which says by 2030 doubles agricultural productivity and income of small scale food producers this is here is we need to 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 have to to understand a lot of the technical issues to be to be to be to be understood in this simple statement first it is about small scale uh, food producers who are they who are the small scale food producers how do we really differentiate the this small scale pr pr producers is it an absolute measurement or a relative measurement can we say like you know any any anybody with less than half an hectare or one hectare is a small scale producer what about you know what do you mean by doubling the the the, the, the income how do we measure this income and what are the critical components that we should really take into consideration to globally you know measure this uh, this increment in, in in income therefore identification of the the smallholders the identification of what components of income has to be considered to to have the standard uh, comparability result at the end of the day is is very very in, in important that's what we are going to, to to discuss in this thing it's not only giving at global or national level but we need to make sure that no one is left behind this is when we are able to, to, to disaggregate this indicator in different ways, like, you know, uh, with respect to gender, indigenous peoples, family farmers, pastoralists, and, you know, in different disaggregation techniques, which is very critical to, 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 to make sure that no one is uh, left behind. Therefore, indicator 231232 are basically related to goal two, target three, and this really requires a certain to, 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 to make sure that we really know who are the smaller holders and how to really measure this their, their, their incomes and productivity. How do we measure this productivity? What is the, the, the best way of measuring productivity? It is labor, it is land, you know, these are the issues that we really need to identify, but there must be some consensus to be built in order to make sure that you know international comparability among different countries can be can be done. Therefore. Measuring productivity in terms of what? Measuring uh, income in terms of which type of uh, critical income components is the type of discussions that we are going to, to have in the next uh, three days. So under this target 2.3, to, to measure to, to, to measuring double the income and productivity of the, the small scale holders, there are two indicators that are derived. One is 231. It talks about the volume of production per level per labor, it, it aims to, 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 it aims to measure, to measure how much volume can be produced per unit, per unit of labor. Therefore, it, it is to make, to make sure that this thing is doubled by the end of the, the, the SDG period by 2030. Therefore, we need the first one measures how much volume can be produced per unit labor, while the second one is talks about the average income of small scale food producers disaggregated by different uh, types of disaggregation, including sex and in, in indigenous status. Here, it refers to the acute uh, and actual net earnings that the food producers obtain from their agricultural activities. As I said, which type of income to be considered is we are going to, 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 to see it later on. So, there are two things here. One is the volume of production. The other is the, the income. As, as we say, the target itself talks about double the productivity and income. And we are going to measure using two indicators, one dedicated to volume of production, one dedicated to uh, average income. But in order to measure these two things, the first critical thing we need to, to, to understand is who are these guys? Who are these small scale farmers? And why are we really interested in these small scale uh, producers? Uh, I, I will come to that point uh, in the next slide. This indicator 2.31, it doesn't stand just by its, uh, its, uh, 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 by its own. It's really interlinked with different uh, 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 indicators and goals. In particular, this uh, indicate uh, these indicators to three are related to uh, goal one in poverty, gender equality, and uh, good jobs and economic growth, and uh, goal ten, which reduce uh, inequality. 
For, for instance, uh, by promoting development policies in favor of small scale producers, the local economy will be strengthened. That means we are improving or we are in, uh, contributing to the end of poverty. Therefore, it's related to goal one of the SDG. The same, we are going to disaggregate to make sure that you know we have this uh, small scale um, productivity increased and disaggregated by gender. In that case, we are really promoting you know, uh, gender equality. Target 2.3 deals with average labor productivity, which is really related to good jobs and uh, economic growth, which is focused of the goal eight. So as, as I said, this is not standing by its own, but it's really contributes to the achievement of the other uh, important goals there. And there is a, a big of, uh, bit of inter uh, relationship among different uh, goals of the SDGs. As I said, why, why are we really interested in small scale producers? Now, this is very, very important. You know, here, uh, as, as we speak, more than 500 million small, uh, small, uh, small farmers are available worldwide. Most are relied in red fed, no technology, no um, um, other means of production, but they wait for the uh, annual seasonal rains. But they provide up to 80% of food uh, consumed in the large part of the developing world. Therefore, Without considering this large um, um, population of the wallet who are contributing for the large production of food, uh, food consumed in, in, the, in the wallet, we are, cannot really uh, be sure that we, uh, we, we achieve the, the SDGs. Significant number of uh, people, um, mostly uh, relying on rain, but uh, contribute to the large amount of food production. Therefore. We, these, are, these are very important. Therefore, we need to make sure that we have adequate policies for these guys so that they, uh, they improve their productivity as well as their income so that we have no one left behind in this endeavor. Investing in small uh, smallholder women and men is important way to increase food security because they, they, they contribute to, 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 to food security among the holding level as well as in the community level as, 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 as we speak. Small scale food producers are one of the main workforces, and then we can't just leave this large number of workforces with this type of vulnerability, with less productivity and less income in, in before the end of the SDGs. In general, supporting small scale food producers serves multiple purposes, in particular, securing food security, sustainable rural livelihood, as well as global food production. Therefore, due to these main important reasons, this is important to focus on these small scale food producers. That's why we have a specific target, a specific indicator to monitor how they are progressing. This is not a, a new initiative, to be honest, this uh, issue of like, you know, uh, improving the small scale uh, you know, the life uh, livelihoods, but it, it, won't, it doesn't move uh, as, as, as it, ha it has been desired. Why? The first critical problem was absence of a common and clear definition of the target population. What is, who are small scale producers? There was no any standard definition to be applied globally until we have this 2.3, this, this the definition of smaller, uh, small scale holders for computing this 231, 232. Therefore, that was one of the critical limitations. Therefore, you know, different countries use different type of approaches, land size, livestock size, or income, you know, therefore comparability was not really impossible. Therefore, lack of standardized definition of identification of these small scale holders hinders how to properly measure the, 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 this the productivity and income of small holders. So without this definition, if you don't have such a standard definition, there is no systematic information about small scale food producers because you can't collect data with what, based on what type of definition are we going to collect data about these small scale holders. Therefore, no standard definition, it hinders an availability of data. So if you don't have uh, uh, timely data, you know, um, uh, timely data and you know, um, continuous the system of data generation based on standard definition, there is no way that you can develop uh, you know, effective, you would be able to, de to, to design effectively a policies that should uh, target this, this population. Therefore, even though there are, there were some attempts in different, you know, very, 
dismantled way, but there was no any standard things due to the three uh, main uh, the, the, the points that I raised. Absence of standard definition that lacks uh, an ability of data, and then therefore there is no any policy uh, development process in this regard. Now this issue of target 2.3 action, action plan is to, add to, 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 to to fill this gap and come up with a proper approach so that this can be really measured properly. Therefore, the action plan of this target 2.3 focus in identifying small scale food producer, which, which in, the, in the next minutes Ida will be presenting how to, how to really identify the small scale producers, how to collect, uh, to, 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 to make sure that data is collected based on this, uh, to, to, to address, to, to generate data for these indicators, um, and, and then through these surveys, fill the data gaps. Then once we have a standard definitions, once we are able to have uh, to fill the data gaps, then the next step would be to compute, to, to, to measure you know, the, 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 the development on, on these small scale producers. Therefore, this, we, 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 this training will be focusing on two issues now, defining small scale holders and how to manage uh, to, 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 to generate data and compute the uh, SDG 23.1 indicator. Then the policy part would be, uh, will not be part of this, uh, this training as you, as you can expect. So this is what uh, we will be covering in this uh, two, three, uh, two, two days of the training. So when we try to report on target 2.3, it requires a regular monitoring of these two indicators, 231, 232. Therefore, we have developed methodologies that can entail in, into three steps. One is, as I said repeatedly, how do we identify the small scale food producers? That's one component of the training. The second would be how to compute indicator 2.3.1, which is output per labor unit. And the, the third one would be how to compute the income component, which is 2.3.2. Therefore, you know, we focus, we spend a reasonable amount of time for in, in the second part, the first part, which is very, very critical because we need to identify who are these guys, who are these small scale uh, holders. Therefore, the, the, the next session, session will be discussing that one. Once we identify those things, then how do we, com we compute the productivity? What are the components that we should be considering in terms of you know, uh, computing the product, uh, productivity? How do you compute this productivity per labor? And how do we really, uh, what are the components that we really should be considering in terms of computing the, for the, the, the income as well? You know, which, which variables are critical uh, in this methodological uh, definitions that we developed? Therefore, these are the three things that we should be first focusing. Finally, before I, I close, the critical uh, problem is having the data. This requires farm level data. I mean, the farm level data is required to make sure that we have, we have, we, 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 we generate this, this, this indicator. This can be obtained in a regular service. In many countries, this is the, the, the challenge because, uh, you know, regular annual agricultural surveys are not a usual practice in most parts of the country. For, to fill these gaps, FAO is proposing uh, uh, the, integra the Agricultural Integrated Survey or AGRIS program. And in the, uh, the purpose of this uh, AGRIS is to bridge the 10 year gap that normally exists between agricultural censuses and the AGRIS survey collects data every year for core, core module, when you say core module, which includes current agriculture production its value. And then we can, we can have a rotating model module, which collects about the economy, which collects about the labor, which are really important to, 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 to compute this uh, indicator. Therefore, the, 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 the bottom line is there should be a regular uh, data generation mechanism. And then uh, as Naman was saying, we should be hearing from you how you, you, your system is working and then how we can really come up with an action plan to make sure that this type of data can be regularly generated so that we uh, Bangladesh can compute SDG 231-232 in a regular uh, basis. So we need some type of system which can generate uh, uh, this, the, the data that's required to compute 231-232 so that we can generate uh, data on 231 and 232 in a regular uh, basis. I think this is, you know, what I have as an introduction and the technical issue of you know discussing how to identify smaller scale producers, how to compute 231, 232 is gonna to follow. Thank you very much.
Okay. Uh, we have a question. Thank you, Jacob. I see Mr. Mehenas has a question. Okay. Mahenas, please unmute your microphone and ask your question, please. Uh, you, your microphone is uh, muted. Um, Mehenas. Mehenas. Just click on the, the small icon for the microphone. Maybe it was a mistake. Okay, so if there is no, anyway, the questions you will you have some wrap up at the end, and uh, if the question we skip any question now, we we have time to to raise them. So to for the sake of time, maybe uh, Ida, if you are ready, you yes. can uh, go with your presentation. Thank you. So, assalamu alaikum, everyone. Good afternoon, and thanks to all the participants to, for joining us today, and to Naman and Jacob for the nice introduction. So, I'm Aida Khalil, uh, a statistician from the Office of Digital Statistician, and I will present on, of, on one of the components uh, of the methodolo methodology for indicator 231 and 232, uh, precisely on the uh, definition of uh, small scale food producer. So I will start by sharing my screen. Um, okay, can you all see my screen? Yeah, yes. Perfect. So, um, as I was saying, this definition, uh, with this presentation will only focus on the uh, identification of uh, small scale food producers, both in theory and in practice. So, in this session, we will see the, the theory behind this methodology. And after the break, we will do a practical exercise to put this theory in practice. So, uh, this is the structure of Of, uh, the presentation. First, I will uh, recap in, uh, target 2.3 and the indicators that have been selected to monitor this target. Then I will give you a brief overview of all the frequently adopted criteria to define smallholders that we found uh, in, the uh, in the literature when we were developing the methodology to define small-scale food producer for SDG monitoring. You will see that uh, all the approaches that are available in the literature uh, can be either absolute or relative, and we will discuss the difference between uh, these two types of approaches. And then after giving all the, let's say, all the background, I will introduce the methodology that has been adopted by uh, the FAO, explaining all the concepts and definition and, and, and discussing the data items that are needed to identify uh, small holders. So um, during my presentation, you will, you will have various ways to, to, to ask for questions, either uh, in the chat or in the Q&A &A section. Otherwise, you can raise your hand and we will uh, let you uh, present your questions at the end of, uh, of my presentation. Okay, so... Um, as Jacob presented earlier, uh, the um, target uh, 2.3 aims at doubling by 2030 the agricultural productivity and incomes of small scale food producers, in particular women, indigenous people, family farmers, pastoralists and fishers, including through secure and equal access to land, other productive resources and inputs, knowledge, fin financial services, markets and opportunities for value addition and on-farm employment. So the, the critical aspect here is to understand who the small scale food producer are. So uh, the, the income of whom we, we should double and the productivity of whom we should uh, double indicators, indicator 231 and indicator 232. Indicator 231 is about the volume of production of small scale food producer per labor unit. And indicator 232 is, about the income of, uh, of small-scale food producers. Um, 
Okay, so both these indicators are now in tier two. So meaning that there is an international agreed methodology for their computation and uh, the reporting rate, unfortunately, is below the 50% of countries. So the, the reporting rate of this indicator is still uh, very low. When these two indicators were endorsed, uh, they were both in tier three. So there was no uh, internationally agreed methodology that could be used to compute them. And the main reason why a uh, methodology was uh, missing was the lack of an international standard, an international clear definition of the target population, meaning the small scale food producer. So the, the methodology that the FAO has proposed covers three areas, basically the identification of the target population, the small scale food producer, the computation of indicator 231, so the productivity, and the computation of indicator 232, so the uh, income. Now we will focus only on the identification of the target population. So here uh, I would like to give you a brief overview, let's say, of the history of the endorsement of, uh, of this definition. So the, the FAO started working on this definition in, in 2016 and beginning of, uh, of 2017. And then it was submitted by the Interagency and Ex Expert Group on SDGs in May 2017. In August 2017, this uh, uh, definition was endorsed by the chair of the EIG SDG. And, and, and after endorsement, the, the FAO wanted to consult member countries on the proposed definition. So during the fall 2017, FAO called for a, a global consultation, uh, thanks to which we received feedbacks from 58 national and regional uh, institutions. Uh, so this, uh, this, the, this refinements that were included in the, um, in the definition. And uh, let's say that at the 70 IG SDG meeting, the methodology for the two indicators was considered acceptable, but some refinements were still needed. First of all, uh, we needed to understand uh, if including on or not including non-professional farm uh, from the target population. And then uh, um, uh, to, like uh, the definition needed to be adapted to countries with uh, uh, a quite homogeneous farm scale, where large uh, size farmer may end up being considered small. So following an in-depth uh, in discussion, uh, an additional test, uh, test between May and July 2018, it was agreed that uh, the small scale food producer would be identified by using the approach proposed by the FAO that we will see in the, in the rest of the presentation, and then excluding hobby farms from the, from the computation. So hobby farms should not be uh, included in the definition of smallholders, and applying a maximum cap to exclude farmers that have revenues above 25,000 euro that have been uh, uh, converted in PPP US dollars as uh, 35 and 387 uh, uh, international dollars. Uh, so this is more or less all. And uh, the, this methodology was approved on the 6th of September 2018. So from that day, this is the, the methodology that we will see during this training is the official methodology that has been agreed by the EIAG SDG. So before entering into uh, the details of the approach proposed by the FAO, I will uh, provide a brief overview of all the alternative approaches that were found in the literature to define a uh, small scale food producer. Uh, so indeed, uh, before proposing a definition, the FAO performed an extensive literature review of uh, all the approaches that, uh, that were available, both in, uh, let's say, scientific journal, but also the definition that were used by national statistical offices or in international organization producers. Um, let's say that is a, it was a challenge to reach a consensus on a, on a definition, so on who the small scale food producer are. And this is because uh, they have been defined in various ways, depending on the, con on the context, so on the use of the definition that, um, um, that needed to be done. And 
on the uh, specific countries. So uh, in the, let's say, generally speaking, small scale, a scale food producer can include farmers, pastoralists, uh, artisans, fishers, and forest dependent communities. So uh, um, some of the presumed characteristics of this population are in terms of uh, type of production units, small scale food producer are normally imagine as producer that uh, cultivate small volumes on or use small uh, plot of lands or uh, use literal or, or new technology and re rely mainly on family labor. On the other side, uh, for what concerns the uh, economic situation, uh, it is assumed that uh, uh, small scale uh, food producers very often belong to the informal economy, are vulnerable in the supply chains with relatively low revenues, and have often, uh, uh, let's say, beside uh, the on-farm activities, they have also other off-farm activities in terms of uh, income generation. So, uh, as in the literature, based on different criteria, based on they can be grouped on, let's say, four groups. Criteria based on the amount of uh, uh, factors of production, uh, for example, uh, the amount of uh, operated land, the amount of labor, uh, the amount uh, of, uh, of production. Uh, then there are criteria based on the share of family workers in the holding, so the amount of family laborers that is used in the holding. Criteria based on uh, concepts referring to the connection between the holding and the market, so the, the amount of own consumption or the uh, market orientation of the holding. And criteria, criteria based on the economic size of the holding, so the, the, the revenues generated by the holding. Um, so by reviewing all this uh, definition, we, we realize that the land size, so the, the first type of criteria, criteria based on the amount of factor of production and particularly on the amount of land use was the most national definition of small scale food production and the number of uh, uh, or the number of livestock heads. So all these criteria need to be quantitative in the sense that uh, there is a need to uh, set thresholds that allow to separate small scale food producer from other producers. Um, these thresholds can be set either in absolute terms of re or relative terms. So let's see what is the, um, the difference. Before uh, continuing, I want just to make sure if that my uh, connection is working well and you can hear me. So if someone could confirm that um, you are hearing me. You are good, Aida. Okay, thank you, Jacob. So as I was saying, all these uh, uh, criteria need to be quantitative. So for example, if we look at the amount of land, we need to find the variable, so the amount of land that be, can be quantified and the threshold should be established to uh, separate small scale food producer from other producers. And these thresholds can be in, set in uh, absolute or relative terms. So uh, an absolute uh, threshold is a uh, threshold that is fixed and it's the same for all uh, farmers of all countries, let's say. So a threshold that is the same for all countries. Uh, um, regardless, the, for example, the agroecological uh, zone, the socioeconomic condition of the countries. And uh, an example of absolute threshold, if you consider, for example, the land size approach is to, uh, for example, call small, all the food producer that operate less than uh, a given number of hectares of land. So for example, two hectares of land. Uh, a relative approach instead is a, a relative threshold that change depending on the reference system, so the, uh, on the context. So in the, uh, if within the SDG monitoring framework, the threshold would correspond to a specific percentile of the selected uh, criterion variable in each country. So for example, all the pro pro production unit falling below the 25th percentile of the land distribution can be considered as part of the group. So uh, absolute or relative approach, this is the main uh, distinction. So the pros of an absolute approach is that it can enhance comparability across country. 
but at the same time, uh, it disregards difference among national contexts. So what is uh, small in one country could not could be uh, big in another country. Let's consider, for example, like uh, Australia that operates, uh, or, or countries like Brazil that operate uh, big, uh, big land. So all the farmers have relatively very big uh, land. So if we would set an absolute threshold, we may end up with uh, zero small scale food producer in that specific country. Although you may have, for example, uh, producer that are relatively um, uh, small compared to the countries, uh, the, the, the producer in the countries. On the other hand, the, uh, the, the relative approaches are, uh, let's say, don't allow uh, perfect comparability, but uh, uh, allow identifying in each country producer who are relatively disadvantaged in terms of the selected uh, criteria. So this, uh, uh, this type of approaches reflect more the country specific differences. So for example, in a country like Brazil, where, where all the food producer operate big amounts of land, you would still have small scale food producer because there will be some uh, um, producer that operate an amount of land that is small if compared with the, uh, let's say, for example, the average size of land uh, in the country. <clears throat> so let's see now the approach that has been used by uh, the FAO. First of all, uh, we um, focus on the criteria that have been used. So the FAO adopted a methodology based on the combination of two criteria, the physical size of the farm and the economic size of the farm. We will see later how these criteria are combined together, but for now, just let's just focus on the, let's say, on concept. So to define the physical size of the farm, we look at the size of the land, and the size of earth, so the number of uh, animals in the farm. Uh, to see the economic size of the farm, instead we see the uh, amount of revenues generated by the farm. So using this criteria, the FAO adopted a relative approach. So to identify producers who are relatively disadvantaged in terms of access to land, availability of livestock and economic revenues with an homogeneous criteria. So uh, the three criteria are combined adopting a, rel uh, a relative approach. And, and, and this was done because in, the, in a context uh, like the SDG monitoring framework where many, many like all different countries need to be put, let's say on a comparable scale, scale using an absolute approach uh, would uh, disregard national differences and, and perhaps in the end turns uh, in also in less comparability because as, as I was saying, what is big in one country may be small um, in, in another. And here I, I put a little example to, to explain a paradox that we could uh, incur in uh, when using, for example, an absolute threshold such as, I don't know, five hectares of land to define small holders. Imagine like Australia where, where everyone has big parcel of land, you would have a very, very, very small percentage of farmers operating less than five hectares, perhaps only hobby farms. And then you would have countries where, uh, like the Netherlands, where there are a lot of farmers operating small, uh, small parcel, but uh, using uh, very productive uh, agricultural systems such as I don't know greenhouses or or uh, or these let's say uh, enhanced technologies where very small parcels can be very uh, productive. So you would uh, let's say classify as small as small scale and vulnerable the eighty percent of farmers, while perhaps they they, they are not actually. So the few decided to use this. Uh, a relative approach by combining, we said, two criteria. So the physical size of the farm, which is expressed by the land size. So all, uh, if we look at the land size, all the producers that fall in the bottom 40% of the accumulated distribution of land size in hectares are classified as small with respect to the land. We will see later how to implement this uh, this definition. So producer falling in the bottom 40% of the accumulated distribution of the land size. 
Then uh, with respect to livestock, you have the producer falling in the bottom 40% of the cumulative distribution of total livestock heads. And these together, so the land size and the livestock size, define the physical size of the farm for this uh, small, uh, small scale food producer definition. And then we have the economic size of the farm uh, where we, uh, we classify as small, all the farmers that follow, uh, fall in the bottom 40% of the distribution of total revenues measured in PPP, so in, um, in parity purchasing power, with a cap of uh, 35,387 uh, US dollars. So this was a cap that was suggested by, by Canada, or yeah, but by some developed countries that uh, we're saying, okay, a farm can be small, uh, but should uh, like should not exceed revenues of of this size because with revenues greater of this size, we cannot consider uh, a farm as uh, small. So, in order to be classified as small scale food producer, a food producer needs to satisfy uh, condition one A, one B, two plus the uh, cap, so all together. So to conclude, uh, we have this situation. So we have the producer in the bottom 40% of the cumulation, uh, cumulated distribution of the physical size, which is given by the land size and the herd size. Then we have the producer in the bottom 40% of the cumulated distribution of total revenues. And the intersection of this group give us the small scale food producers. So all conditions need to be uh, satisfied. Okay, so let's see important concepts and definitions. So we we said no that we use an absolute uh, uh, sorry a relative criteria, a, a relative approach and three criteria: the physical size of the farm that looks at the land size and the herd size, and the economic size of the farm that look at the total revenue. So here we have to understand, okay, what, how do we compute the land size? What type of land do, do we consider uh, in this calculation? When we look at the earth size, we have to understand how do we uh, compute the total number of, like the livestock counts in an international, uh, internationally comparable way. And then for the economic size, we have to uh, understand which are the components of revenues that should be considered. So for what concerns the land size, the definition of sm small scale food producer use the terms of, uh, sorry, the, the concept of operated land. The operated land includes uh, uh, only plots that are actually used for agricultural activities. So these include, uh, when, when you will compute the land size, you will have to consider all the land that is cultivated with permanent crops, then all the land with, that is cultivated with temporary crops and the fallow land. So the land that is left uncropped and not dedicated to grazing. So the, the land that is, uh, the, let's say is left there to, to rest and, and use for, for uh, next years. And it, it excludes all the land rented out. So the ownership of the land is not considered. In this uh, section, you, you will include also all the plots that are used for these purposes, but are rented from someone else. And we exclude the land that is rented out, so that is used, used by other farms, the forest land, and the land that has been abandoned prior to the reference period. So uh, these are the three components that should be included in the computation. For what concerns the number of livestock, we needed like to, to use something comparable at international level. So instead of looking just at the number of cattle plus, I don't know, the number of buffaloes, sheep, goats, and so on, we refer to, uh, a, let's say, an international scale of conversion factor that is called tropical livestock units. So for each uh, uh, type of uh, livestock, you have a conversion factor. Of course, this conversion factor depends on the, on the region you are in. Um, 
So, uh, for, for example, for Cato, you will have uh, a conversion factor of 0 0.5, for Buffalo, 0 0.5, Sheep, 0 0.1. And this unit of measure standardizes different lives of types in a single measurement through a conversion factor that is valid for specific livestock types in specific areas of the world. So, basically, what uh, you should do is uh, when, when you have the, uh, you look at the livestock uh, stock. By in, in, in agricultural holdings by livestock category, uh, this should be converted in tropical livestock unit before determining the uh, livestock size for the definition of smallholders. So then the total revenue, this is the last component. Uh, as you know, like um, it wouldn't make sense to consider the, the, the economic size in terms of volume of production per se, because it doesn't make much sense to sum, for example, apple, uh, the production of apple with the production of uh, maize or, or carrots or, and so on. So looking at revenues allow us standardizing the production volume for different uh, products. So uh, normally when you compute um, revenues, you have the volume of production most multiplied by a cost and selling, uh, cost and selling price. So uh, in the smallholder definition, depending of course on the data that are available from your survey. So this is an important element, but in theory you should include uh, revenues from crop, livestock, fisheries, aquaculture, and forestry. Very often we, we work with countries where only uh, revenues from crop and livestock are, are available. But of course, if other components are available, they should be included. So uh, revenues are computed with this formula. So where you have uh, the uh, VEKT stands for the volume of reduction for product E of producer K during year T. And then PEKT stands for the, price, the cost and selling price received by the small scale food producer K for the agricultural product T during the same year T. So basically what you have to do is for a given producer, you have to uh, find, let's say, the volume of production by product in a given year, multiplying it by its, uh, its uh, cost and selling price and sum the, the value of production for each uh, product to get the, the total revenue of the farm. So the, the revenue uh, should not be expressed in your local currency unit, but should be converted in purchasing power policy US dollars. Uh, so that we have a comparable measure of, uh, of, of these revenues. Like we put uh, these revenues uh, in an international comparable way. Uh, the conversion factor to produce PPP um, US dollar revenues can be found uh, in the link that I've put in these slides. You see there's, uh, you, you will be able to, to, to select your country and find the uh, PPP for a given, uh, given year. So normally you have the revenues expressed in the, your um, local currency unit. It's enough to multiply it by the conversion factor that you will find uh, at this link. And you will get the value of revenues that you should use for the uh, smallholder definition. Okay, so now, um, we, we can uh, see together which are the main components of revenues. So very, very often you will find yourself with the value of production directly to be multiplied, sorry, the quantity produced uh, minus waste to be multiplied by the price. But otherwise, like the revenues components are the crop sold, so the quantity of crop that has been sold, the uh, quantity of crop that has been used for own consumption, the quantity of crop used for feed, so that have been used to feed uh, livestock. Uh, crop saved as seeds, the crop stored for next seasons. The crop used for byproducts, so for example, flour or uh, straw. Uh, the crop given as a gift. Uh, the crop used for paying uh, inputs, so paying labor, rent and other inputs. And the crop exchange in share cropping agreements. Similar, uh, similarly, there are the components of the livestock revenues, such as the livestock sold live, so the animal that you sell live, then the livestock given as, as gift, the livestock products, such as the meat, or byproducts, such as dung sold, livestock products used for consumption, 
uh, livestock products and byproducts used as pay for inputs, labor and uh, or as loan repair, uh, repayment, but in general to pay for any input used in uh, agricultural production. And then livestock byproduct that is self-use. So for example, uh, um, and this is also considered under uh, as a cost for crop production. Uh, then we have similarly the fishery revenues and the forestry revenues. So if you, ha you have data on fishery, the main components are the captured fi uh, fresh fish that is sold, the captured processed fish that is sold. So fresh fish is just the, 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 the um, sales of fish, while uh, the, the, the processed fish are, for example, uh, dry fish or um, yeah, pr processed fish. A capture fresh fish used for own consumption, capture uh, processed fish used for own consumption, then the traded fresh fish that is sold, and the traded processed fish that is sold. And then for what concerns the forestry revenue, we have, we have all the forestry products that are sold, uh, the forestry products for own consumption, forestry products stored, uh, forestry products used for paying labor, for paying rent, for paying inputs, and uh, given out in share cropping agreement. So uh, after this training, we will share this presentation, so you will have a complete reference of all the components that should be considered for uh, the revenues. Uh, so with this, my presentation on the smallholder definition is finished. And I leave space for questions, or I can also go back to specific part uh, of the presentation if something is not clear. Thank you very much. So I don't know if uh, Naman wants to. Or Jakob. Yeah. I think it would be good to give the floor for any, any questions. Yes. Who wants to break the ice? I think there, there was a lot of conceptual things which is bombarded by idea. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure it, it might be a bit difficult to capture all in this 15 minutes. Hello, 15 minutes Faridun, I think I was off. OK, now, now I leave it for you, Namat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, no, it's okay. I was just saying that we are a little bit behind the schedule, but uh, we can take maybe five, ten minutes for questions because this is a very, very important part of the the, the, the training. So, uh, anybody who wants to ask questions to to Ida from the participants. Yeah. Just one thing, Faridun, I cannot activate my video. I don't know why it says that you have. Ah, OK. Thank you. Yeah, good. OK, Dr. Uh, Amirul and Thank all you. participants, any questions, clarifications you have? Oh, not at this moment, because the definitions are very clear. But when uh, we will go, for, go to the exercise, so how to you know, capture from the main survey question, that would be a very you know, learning point, actually. So proceed for, for the time being now. And yeah. when any, any question is there, participants will raise their hands. And we see one raised hand. You can address them. Mr. Akhtar. Yes, Dr. Hassan Khan from BBS, Bangladesh. Yes, I want to know how can you calculate the white factor for cow, buffalo, sheep, goat? How can you calculate the white factor? In the by region, it is South Asia. Aida, you got the questions? Yes, yes, I have a question. That's how can you calculate the white factor for cow, buffalo, goat, sheep, pig? Just we mentioned Adiba, yeah, I we mentioned Aida, the mm -hmm. uh, uh, buffalo is 0.5 and goat is 0.2. And pig is food is point to and pig is point to. How can you find out the white factor for those eh, electrons by reason? Okay. So I'm I'm not sure I understood, but I will share my screen on the on this slide that you are mentioning. And we, may, we may can see together. Know, may I clarify, uh, clarify the point he raised? Yes. Factor. I think it's good. Please, this, this slide. Yeah. 
that is region yeah, is cattle is 0.5 i just know i might just know how can you calculate the weight factor uh, so maybe uh, no yeah. no I, the, the question is like you know i think the question is clear how can you develop this conversion factor you know this okay, tlu yeah. You know, for different uh, okay. regi regions, you know. So, so mm -hmm. how how can you say like for South Asia it is zero point five, it is for mm -hmm. cattle, for Bufari and so forth. I think you can uh, answer that one. It is a is out yes. outcome of a different research activities and mm -hmm. it's a scientific research output, and it is an international standard table. Yes, report, yes, which has been yes. developed through different researches. Therefore, it is not existing like you know it is related to 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 competing two three one two three two. This has been there. Through through the research output and for any comparison in terms of you know for example how much livestock do you have in in, in, in ethiopia and in india and in bangladesh you know mm -hmm. the numbers are different if you yes. want to make an international yes. comparison you have to bring them into uh, one unit which is yes. they call it tropical livestock unit it is a, an output of a research activity uh, of a few actually of, the, exactly. of uh... Yeah, of, basically in a few, we have a, a department that only works on, on livestock related issues, also livestock statistics. And they have uh, uh, developed this international scale that is used not only for this uh, indicator, it's used for any, many other purposes. Uh, and basically the, the, the objective is, for example, that uh, a cow in the US is not, the same as a cow in Africa or in South Asia, like the, 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 for example, the meat that you can get from, from a cow in different agroecological zones, the quantity of meat is different uh, and the size is different. So there's this, com this conversion scale uh, should bring everything to uh, the, the size of, of this type of animals like cattle in the US. So all refers, yeah, you see the North, North America, for example, That's is one. one. Yeah, yeah. so because everything is compared to a, a cattle in the US, basically. Also other categories. Suppose I interest example, uh, uh, Bangladesh have two cows. It's, uh, it's, it's comparable to North America, one. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. yes. And that depends yes. on the on the size of uh, uh, cattle in uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, I think Due there to is the climate or to yeah, there is a research behind this, mm -hmm. the biological considerations okay. of the different species of animals. So uh, there, there could be a link sent to yes. To, more detail on uh, what is behind these numbers, how they come about. So there is a whole body of research. Yeah, we can uh, share that uh, perhaps after yeah. this session. Yeah, okay. Question. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Any other question? Okay. Okay, I see someone else. Uh, okay. Faridun, who, who is asking the question? You are muted tahidul islam unmute tahidul islam Hi. may i questions yes please yes. Uh, in bangladesh one cattle is big and one cattle is small two cattle but then it is a two well, then it is one then we count it is one one is big and one is small Mm -hmm. Then how how do we calculate? Uh, is it one? I think uh, you should uh, use the conversion factor in any case because that's also what uh, what are the other countries do. Like you you find the conversion factor for, uh, for South all Asia for yes. all sides for all sides. I, I would say so. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What do you think, uh, Naman Jacob? No, no, I think that's a yeah. very relevant question. But mm -hmm. I think those are really kind of uh, proxies in order to be mm -hmm. able to overcome the idea of not uh, adding apples and oranges. So if you have a cow, you have a chicken, you have a pig, you know, the, the main consideration is how to add the pigs and the cows and the chicken. 
-hmm. Now you are right because if you say a cow, you may have different uh, ages of the cow, different. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Have a big cow, a small cow, etc. That's okay. another aspect of the problem. But this is uh, tackling the higher problem of adding the species together. But you are right. I think there should be. Uh, I don't know the answer of that, but uh, I think uh, this this is also another consideration. If you consider okay. only the cow, uh, the, a small cow, very small cow, and the big cow, so the the value may not be the same. You are right. Another you know, question. maybe I, 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 yeah. I have oh. another question. Yeah. Uh, how do we calculate? Uh, how do we? Uh, how do we find out uh, the? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. The small scale food producers. How do we find out? Is there any thresholds? Yes. For so calculating. I, yeah. 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 I will show you. So now oh, yes, I will. Do. I will go back to my slide. Just one thing to add on the TLUs conversion factor. Um, what I, I think those conversion factor represent an average size. Yes. Of. Yes. Yes. Uh, for example, a cattle in South Asia. So that's why you can multiply that um, by, I don't know, both big cows and small cows, because that represents the average size of cattle in, uh, in farms in, in South Asia. So, yeah. so in, in the end, that should be fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I will share my... Uh, Presentation again. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So um, I think I will better answer your question with the with the practical exercise. But uh, just to, to to clarify. So. Uh, mm, so this is a relative approach, meaning that the threshold is not like five hectares or two hectares or I don't know one thousand dollars of of product. Is a relative uh, threshold that will uh, be different in Bangladesh with uh, uh, and I don't know Pakistan or another country. Uh, it it will be a, a, a relative uh, threshold that. It depends on on the data that you have. Uh, attend and the threshold will be computed for land, the TLUs, so the livestock and the uh, revenues. And you will determine the threshold by identifying. I will I will show you with the example, but you will identify the, the land size of uh, uh, the farm that divides the bottom 40% of the accumulated distribution of land with the remaining one. So uh, uh, I will show you like with an example, it's, it's very simple. You have to sort by the, 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 the holding by their land size. Then you accumulate the, the land size, you identify the maximum and the 40% percent of this maximum accumulated value and uh, uh, looking at this uh, 40 percent you will identify the farm that uh, the, the one farm that divides the small farms from the big one uh, but I think it's it will be much clearer with a practical example okay okay okay, okay. thank you we have a question in q a yes okay uh, I can read the question. If uh, in Bangladesh, Australian freezer is uh, brought up, then the TLU, which TLU should be used? I mean, the especie yeah. which is from uh, Australia, but is brought to Bangladesh. So what would be used? Okay, so uh, this is a good question. I think uh, this, uh, this issue wasn't tackled before. Mm -hmm. Um, so more than an answer, like we can have a discussion on this. So far, I think for any, for example, for any cow in Bangladesh, we would have used one conversion factor. It's true that you have local breeds and uh, like um, foreign breeds. Mm -hmm. 
So, Naman, what do you think? Maybe in this case, I, I, it's I, I think it needs more. <laughs> we take the question. Yeah, we did. I, I myself have the, 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 this. Uh, I have some breeds from Holland in my park, and mm -hmm. I have some local breeds, and they are completely different. So the question yeah. is really very, yeah, very, very relevant. Different. I think we have also some specialists in the room among the participants. What do you think? From the Minister of uh, Agriculture, I don't know if livestock. Yeah, you just know. May I add something, uh, Naman? Yes. You know, just you know the individual level there may be uh, you know, big differences, but as a whole country level, as I was telling, the average will be exactly 0.5 to compare with other countries, especially Latin America. So I think you know the individual level, this kind of breed, uh, we may find okay these are different. How come? How come we consider 0.5 only? But as at the national level. When the calculate the indicator, this will average out as a statistician, I can say. But yeah. anyway, every five years or every three years, this you know, conversion factor should be revised actually. So that uh, when collectively there are so many and hybrids uh, cultivated in Bangladesh, so this you know, conversion factor will go up close to the you know, Latin America level. That is my understanding actually. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. I think that's a good answer. And uh, as Ida also was uh, pointing out, all these numbers are averages, you know? So, and you said it rightly, because it's not applying to uh, one individual uh, farmer, but it's, it's uh, average out through the whole country. And it's average out through all the species. And uh, so maybe this uh, mitigate a little bit, reduce a little bit the impact of uh, one specific type of uh, species. Uh, yeah, that's what I can say. I don't know, Aida or Jacob, what do you want to add? Yeah, I, I think for, for, for me, I, it, it is the same. Like, you know, maybe in, 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 in not only in this type of thing, but in most of the statistics, you know, there are uh, exceptionals, you know, therefore those, you know, those exceptionals may not be able to be treated, you know, in, in such a national level survey. Therefore, two, three individuals may have some something from outside and, and then, you know, I mean, bringing those type of things in this type of national level analysis, it will be difficult. Yes, it, 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 it is good if we can be as accurate as possible, but at the same time, we need to, 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 to face the reality and we are dealing with the statistics. Therefore, I think in general, this is the, the, the conversion factors that's being available irrespective of you know, where the breeds coming from. As long as it's a cattle in Bangladesh, we use this conversion factor for the time being, I think. Okay. Uh, anyway, those are very, very interesting questions. Any other question before we break? Okay. If there is no more question, I think okay. it's, uh, it's actually, a time actually, for... Actually, yes, yes. Actually, uh, when you, if I calculate uh, uh, computing our two, two, three, one or two, three, two, then we understand everything, uh, what about our conversion factor? Mm. Yes, certainly. And uh, as uh, Aida was saying, the next uh, session will be about practical exam uh, exercises. You know, all these uh, presentations, uh, uh, when, when it comes to the practical exercises, you can uh, put the finger on all the specific uh, things that uh, uh, come into the play. So if there is uh, no more question, I propose we break. Normally, we are supposed to. We are supposed to start. The, hello. No, now I'm continue. Yeah. So for, for, for how long? For how long we should be take the break? Yeah, because exactly. So <laughs> uh, we are a little bit behind the schedule because it's so ten almost, minutes, maybe ten minutes. Yeah, I would say 10 minutes. Okay, let's take 10 minutes. So now, what time is it there? 3.46. So we'll uh, resume at 3.56. Okay. 3.56. Okay. And dear, dear participants, please stay connected. Uh, so I know, you are, you know you will be in connection. And just you know, uh, stay alert. You know. We'll start exactly on 3.56. Okay. 3.56. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And in the meantime, I think Ida will send some uh, data so for the yes. practical exercise. Mm -hmm. Please Thank check, you. check your uh, emails and uh, Ida will be sending some things, some material. Okay.
See you. Uh, I would uh, not to uh, log out. Please stay mm -hmm. in Zoom okay. like for 10 minutes. We will mm -hmm. mute uh, our uh, microphones. Yeah, after 10 minutes, you will just start. Yeah, okay. and I think you know you can stop. You can stop recording for the time being. Sure, of course, of course, yeah, I will yeah. stop recording. Okay. Uh, okay. Good. Let's start the 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 next and the last session for today. Uh, very very important. As uh, Ida was saying, there are two main aspects with this indicator. One is to identify the smallholder. And you, you see that it can be quite a, a bit complex how to identify. And the next that we will see tomorrow is how to compute the indicators themselves. So today, the, the, as you have seen from the questions raised, the, the first step is really how to identify the, the indicators. Now, after the presentation, Ida is going to go through uh, practical exercises so that we all understand how this process is put in practice. Uh, Aida, you have the floor. Yes, thank you, Naman. Uh, so during the break, I've sent uh, two Excel files. One is called a uh, file for practical demonstration. That's the file that I will use to, to show you the exercise that we have prepared. And then there's one for hands-on exercise. So that file will be for you in case you want to uh, replicate the exercise that I will present. So I will use a mix of PowerPoint and uh, Excel. Uh, and then, um, yeah, again, if you have questions, you have the chat, the Q&A, or you can raise your hand and, and we will address questions at the end of the presentation. Okay. So I will start by sharing the presentation. Okay. So uh, for the, the, the practical computation, so the practical identification of small, of small order, we have three main steps. The data preparation, the computation of thresholds to identify small scale food producers. So this I hope will answer to one of the questions that was raised before of the break. And then how to, uh, the third step um, is the combination of the that have been identified in step two to identify small scale food product. First, the main concept implement the steps. Of course, the uh, data that I will use are simplified data. So, uh, certainly, the survey data that uh, you will use will be much more complicated to, to handle than those of this fictional example. Because uh, for this exercise, I've, uh, yeah, I've used a fictional country data where we have all the variables that we need already at the, at the household level or the, the, the farm level. But as you know, you may have, for example, crop-related information that are collected by plot or um, like, um, for example, item related information that may be collected uh, by, uh, by parcel, by, 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 by other subgroups. So you will have to, to, to work at the file to bring all uh, the information at the household level. So let's see uh, step one. Uh, uh, data preparation. So uh, the, the data preparation is basically go from a plot level data or other level data to household level data and compute the overall uh, farm operated land. So basically you have to compute the operated land by summing the land cultivated with permanent crops, land cultivated with temporary crops and fallow land then uh, you will have to include all the plots rented in that uh, are used for other purposes to define this total, uh, sorry, used for agricultural purposes uh, to identify the operated land and exclude all the uh, plots that are rented out. In case you cannot compute the operated land, uh, which normally uh, depends on whether the follow information on fallow land is available or not, you can use the cultivated land as a proxy. Okay, so um, these are, this is the part for the 
plant size. For the earth size, we have seen that uh, by uh, livestock category, we have to first take the livestock uh, stock at holding level by livestock category, and then by livestock category, convert in TLU and determine the total number of TLUs. Then we have to compute the revenues from all agricultural activities that ideally are crop, livestock, fishery, and forestry. Of course, this will depend on the type of data that uh, you have. So if you have only crop and livestock, you will use only uh, crop and livestock. And then you uh, sum all the revenues components to get the total revenues. And finally, this point is not included in the slide. You uh, have to convert in PPP US dollars. So. Hey there, we cannot hear you. I will now go to Excel to see uh, in practice. So I will, I will share the Excel file. Okay. So basically, um, this is the first step. So for la for the land uh, uh, for the operated land, you Can see. Can you please we... increase the increase the size of the screen? Okay. Sorry. Is it better? Yeah. Now it's okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. So you see here, I've taken really, it's a fictional data set. Uh, we consider like a country with uh, 50 holdings. And for this holding, so the PU1, PU2 uh, is the production unit number, so is the key, let's say. And then for each holding, we have the cultivated land, the land uh, with permanent crops, uh, temporary crops, and fallow land. So the operated land is simply given Even by the sum, uh, uh, we, we do this, uh, this operation. Of course, before we have to exclude all the land that is rented out and the land that is rented in. Then for livestock data, I'll, okay, here I've taken the conversion factors for South Asia. Uh, so we have 0 0.5 for cattle, for buffalo, then for sheep and goats, we have 0 0.1. For pig, you have, we have 0 0.2 then and, and so on. So let's suppose that in the survey, we have information on the number of cattle, number of buffalo and all these livestock categories. So for each livestock category and by holding, for example, like this holding of, uh, have five cattle, I have to multiply the five cattle by the uh, TLU conversion factor for cattle. So, and this is repeated for all holdings and for all livestock category, of course, changing the conversion factor depending on the type of livestock that, that is considered. Then at the end, I can sum to determine the total number of livestock in stock and the total number of TLUs by summing each TLU component. This is quite uh, straightforward operations. Then, okay, here uh, again, here I've skipped all the steps that go from plot level data to household level data. So that, uh, I mean, we would have done that with uh, data from, uh, if, if we would have had data from Bangladesh. So here we have to use uh, a fictional example, but in normal cases, you will have some pre-processing operation before that. But this is to say that you have to bring your data to a structure that is similar to the one that is presented here. Then for revenues, we have seen this uh, have to determine the crop revenues by considering all these components that are listed here. When you have the revenues from crops, revenues from livestock, fishery, and forestry, you sum all these components to determine the total revenues. And then you multiply these total revenues by the PPP conversion factor, which can be found uh, uh, from the link that uh, uh, I included in the slides presented before. So you can uh, easily find these conversion factors for Bangladesh. So this is just a fictional example. You, you don't have necessarily to use this. Also because the conversion factor change uh, every year. So you will, for example, if you have a survey for 2016, 
you have to look for the conversion factor for Bangladesh in 2016, uh, going at uh, the website uh, that is reported in the slide. So once we have the operated land, the total TLU, these three columns that uh, I've shown, into a consolidated data set. So we have the production unit number, the operated land in hectares. So this is important. The operated land should be expressed in hectares, not in acres, for example. TLU, in number, and the total revenue seen PPP uh, USD. So now uh, this is what concerns the data preparation. I will uh, start a new sharing. Okay. So are there any questions on, uh, on step one? Oops. Otherwise, I will continue with uh, with step two. There's one question. Yes, there's one question. Yes, yes, one question. Yes, I have a question. I have okay. a question. But uh, Bangladesh collected the fellow land. There's two types. One type is current fellow, and another is permanent fellow. We can include the two types of fellow land in the, uh, in the data, data proceeding. Okay. I, I didn't understand the, the type of fellow land that you have. Sorry. Yes, we have two types of two type of fellow land. One is current fellow land and there is permanent fellow land. We collect ah. both types of data. Okay. And and what is the uh, sorry, the purpose of permanent fellow land in our I must say, when I can't say, when I can't say, this is going, uh, farmer cultivate, no, not a cultivate for the one year, and permanent cultivate, not cultivate for the long time. That is permanent. Fellow. So, what's the difference between uh, permanent uh, fallow and per abandoned, abandoned land? Uh, permanent fallow and current fellow. Current fellow, this fellow is cultivate next year, but this year he, he did not cultivate. A uh, permanent fellow land, uh, 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 farmer did not cultivate for the long time. They treated as a permanent fellow land. Maybe three, four, okay, five years. But, uh, but so let me let me further clarify you know, this one. Say, uh -huh. for example, you know, there are two types. One is current fellow. Current fellow means you know, farmers sometimes uh, don't want to uh, use this year. But next year they, they, they have planned to uh, use that piece of land. Next but year, permanent no, no, is that for some reason, it is the agricultural land. Anyone can cultivate yeah. there. But for their own mm -hmm. purpose or any kind of decision, the, for more than five years of time, they, they these are you know, left un uncultivated. So BBS collects this kind of information. So mm -hmm. according to your you know uh, indicator and your uh, slides, yeah, right. what will be your suggestion? Should BBS you know, combine these two and consider in the uh, equation? or they will you know, leave the permanent fellow from the equation. Yes. So in my opinion, it should be included, the permanent uh, okay. fellow, because sooner or later, like uh, Naman and Jakob can correct me if I'm wrong, but sooner or later, this land would be used for agricultural production. So here we have, we want to understand the, the, the land, the possibility that the farmer has in terms of uh, agricultural production. So, how, man, how much of land he could use, he could operate for his uh, agricultural production. And this is, I think, why also the fallow land is included because that's a, 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 a land that can potentially be used for uh, agricultural production and it's not abandoned. One thing is if it's an abandoned land, but fallow land, it's, it means that it's left there but will be probably used yeah yeah you, you are right you know as the, the soil fertility yeah. is there anytime you know in future they, they, they may be under use so we can consider <laughs> an equation yeah i think for the identification of the small holder probably someone who has a, a because the, the land belongs to him 
and he can operate it <laughs> any any moment. So it's uh, yeah. part of his asset in terms of uh, land. Now the difficulty may come maybe tomorrow when we, we calculate the indicators because the denominator and the numerator should be consistent, meaning that the production should be divided by the land cultivated. So if uh, the land is not producing any any product, maybe we should uh, consider the land that are uh, productive, let's say. But for the identification, I agree with Aida that probably we should uh, consider that as a, an asset. It's an asset for the, the holder. Sorry, Norman, for tomorrow, will we consider the land or the labor? At the denominator. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Okay, okay, no. I was still in the. Okay. For May I say something? Yes. yes. May I say something? Yes. Yes, so far from your e learning course and today's presentation, I understand um, what Mr. Hassan said. There are two types of fellow land in our country, who we consider in our country. One is temporary yeah. and one is permanent. That means it is a uh, fellow for more than five years. But mm. you are considering the volume of production. Mm. So maybe in that case, you are considering the only temporary fellow land, not permanent fellow land. But yeah, so forget, so, about, forget yeah. about my intervention. I was, uh, yeah. because tomorrow we are not talking about the land, we are talking about the labor. So I, I yeah, so. Uh, so we can, we, review, is, uh, we can review this um, matter. Can we consider <laughs> the permanent fellow or only temporary fellow? But it, 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 we it, are it, saying it, that it for the be, identification uh, of the small order, maybe it's better uh, to consider permanent fellow. Uh, Aida, can, 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 you go, can you show us that table, you know, which one is included, which one is excluded? Yeah, yeah. The, the fact is that my table only uh, talks about uh, hello, hello, uh, hello. fellow fellow land but mm -hmm. uh, we we can further review this also perhaps we could come back on this question uh, mm -hmm. uh, i don't know tomorrow or we could further yeah. review the, the um, this is slide yeah this is like land landfill this one and crop and not uh, not dedicated to grazing so not uh, for a pasture it's just yeah the fellow land there is an answer no yeah. if you go to the right column land mm -hmm. abandoned prior to the reference period yes. so if it is abandoned and you know, or not used in prior, uh, prior to the reference period, definitely it, will go, it, will, it is out from the you know, you know definition. Mm -hmm. Yes, but is it very common in in Bangladesh to have permanent uh, fallow? Sometimes you know, yes, uh, say yes. for example, uh, yes. their owner owner lives there in the city, and mm -hmm. he or she doesn't have the intention to. I know I use that that piece of land for agriculture. Yes, yes. A and this fallow is not dedicated for grazing, right? Grazing, you know, not not you know, uh, formally, uh, informally. If, it, you know, if, 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 it is, may if it's part. not dedicated to grazing, it is part of the the the, the, the kind of mm -hmm. it's, It says fallow land, land left uncropped. It is uncropped. It doesn't say that it's uncropped for one year, two years. It is mm -hmm. uncropped. But it is not dedicated for grazing. So as long as it is left fallow, but it's not dedicated for grazing, then this is an asset, as Naman was saying, it should mm -hmm. be part of the computation. Okay. Yeah. And then land abandoned, you know, prior to the reference period, it is completely out. So for abandoned, it's clear, it is out. Then for, uh, for fallow land, so as long as it's not dedicated for grazing, it should be part of the calculation. Mm -hmm. And, and the grazing component was excluded because uh, in, in many countries, uh, so still for international comparability, because in many countries, like the pasture land is very often like communal land. So land used by uh, multiple producers at the same time. So it's difficult to, to find, let's say, the, define the ownership of that land or like who is actually using that land. So that's the reason why grazing land was uh, was excluded 
Yeah. So, uh, 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 is it clear, right? Irrespective of whether it is temporary or permanent, mm -hmm. as long as it is not dedicated for grazing land, it is part of the calculation. Yeah, as, as long as it's but not. Uh, I think it is uh, it also, but in a, a as this indicator 501, grazing land also included in the agricultural land. So there is a difference between 231 and 5A1. No, there are two, two aspects. One is the mm -hmm. identification of the smallholder. Yeah. Here yeah, we are yeah, focusing yeah. on the identification of the smallholder. And then when we come to the, to the computation of the indicator, so it's another thing. But here we are trying to see what are the assets. So how do we classify a holder as a small or non-small. Mm -hmm. okay. So we okay. should consider its uh, assets, its uh, land, and its uh, mm -hmm. revenue, et cetera. So the focus here is only how to define this, the, the, the smallholder. Mm -hmm. And also, um, yeah, well, you mentioned indicator 5A1, no? Uh, I think that's referred to as the agricultural land. That, yes, and yes. here we are yes, referring yes. to operated land, which is defined through these components that we are seeing here. But you, the agricultural land may include other components. Yes. So grazing, uh, if it is uh, if it's not extensive grazing, mm -hmm. may be considered in that case. And uh, so many other things can be included in that case. Okay. Okay, there is another question, uh, Aida, on the chat. Mm -hmm. It says, how you get the groups PU1, PU2, PU3, etc." I think you, you are trying to explain, but you can repeat it again. Okay, okay. So I stopped sharing this and I shared the uh, file. Okay, so here P, PU1, PU2, PU3 are just fictional. This is the key, the identifier of the holding, but it could be anything. It could be like one, two, three. It's just like the, the identifier, the key of the of the farm. So um, sometimes you have data that are presented already at farm level. So you already have this structure. Some other times you may have information such as, for example, the components of the operated land that are reported at plot level. So you will first have to uh, combine values reported at plot level to get the total values for the, for the holding, and, and then you will get this. So these steps of these preparatory steps are not covered by by this exercise because the uh, with um, let's say real world data but tomorrow there will be an example for the computation of the indicator but still uh, my colleague uh, one of my colleagues will show how to go from plot level data or partial level data to household level data so this will be perhaps clearer Evita, can i add something maybe? of course yes Jacob. Okay, uh, as you can see, you know, this, this part is to identify small holders and the data, the first thing have to be at the holding, uh, at the holder level. You know, we need to, we need to have to, 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 to identify who are the small holders. Therefore, if your data is at the plot level, level, for instance, you know, it is a survey, maybe it's a plot level, field parcel, field level, it, it depends, you know, how you collected your survey data. The first thing you need to bring is bring this data in whatsoever level that you have up to the holding level. Therefore, you have to calculate the operating land per holding. Okay, you have to add it, you know, the operating land per holding. And once you have the operating land per holding, you have to attach the number of livestock per holding. And then you have to calculate the revenue per holding. When you say the revenue per holding, it is the production times the price. You know that's how you are going to to, to calculate. Therefore, how much was produced in that in that whole, uh, holding, and you multiply that by the price. For example, if the holding is producing different crops, we will have different prices. Therefore, we have to multiply the production of different crops by the respective prices of these crops and aggregate them. 
together to get into the holding level. That is the PSU level thing. Therefore, it's depending on how you start your, your survey data is, is, is there, then there is one step that, uh, that, that we haven't shown in this process to bring them into this level that I just shown, which means you have to aggregate the everything at the holding level. Because once you have the holdings, we have to run that cumulative distribution to make sure that which are below the 14% uh, cumulative, uh, below the 40% cumulative. That's what we, where she's heading. Therefore, that's how we will be uh, trying to come up with this PU1, PU3, uh, depending on how your uh, micro data is structured when you do the, your, your, your surveys. Thanks, Zaid. Thank you, Jakob. So uh, now I would go. Okay, you. I, sorry. I have go ahead. I, yeah, I, sorry to interview. I have another question for revenue purpose. Uh, uh, just we can calculate the revenue for using the international conversion sector as a dollar. Can you use the conversion sector in our survey period or time here? So in, your question is if you can use the conversion factor in your survey. Survey, right? Huh? Survey, yes, yes. Not okay. consider the calculating, yeah. Just to you have only conduct the survey, then we notify our international conversion currency will be considered. After. <laughs> yes, is it right? No, I, okay, I, think, I will show I, you. Yes. Yeah, just, no, just let me let me clarify here. No, uh, Mr. Uh -huh. Hassan, no, Mr. Hassan, what, when you survey and you calculate first hand, you will calculate the revenue using Bangladeshi currency. Once everything is done, the column is finalized. Then you will convert yes. using the international you know, conversion rate for Bangladesh, particularly on the census census year that we use, because you know year wise this uh, PPP changes. So you use exactly yes. the similar year you know, conversion factor that will be, then. Uh, as they know, I you know, Yakub was telling that you know, lower you know, cumulative one to lower 40 percent will be considered. Okay, I, don't know. I think that's a good answer. Thank you. No, no, you, yeah, okay. you clarified. Thank you. Okay, so I would go back to the present. Uh, someone else has a question. No, uh, I, uh, I, I just want to. Uh, no, that if you have shown us an example, this is not a, a real target as I think. So have you tried uh, the HIS data of Bangladesh for this exercise? Um, sorry, I'm, I'm not sure. No, maybe let, let, let me interfere. I, I think Naman is I, I got your question. I'm sorry. No, I got it, Aida. Uh, you got it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Naman was explaining earlier. I mean, when we when, um, when we are preparing for this training, we, we we wish to use the actual Bangladesh data to show all of these computations. Unfortunately, we are not able to get real Bangladesh mm -hmm. data. Mm -hmm. That's why we are using you know this is this data uh, for, for mm -hmm. as, as as an example, but. I mean, the, the, the bottom line is it, it was good if you can have, you know, the Bangladesh data, but the, 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 the issue is it, 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 it's the same, more or less the same. As I, as I said, we are not, we wish to have the Bangladesh data to be, to be, to be honest. And the Naman was, uh, was you know, exchanging emails with Amirul several times in order to get that data, but it was not possible. That's how. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Now in the communication hour, you know, counterpart from BBS also there. And they reported that you know currently they don't have the data available. Yeah. <laughs> so Nawan and her and his team use this in you know, a proxy data. But yes. you know anyway, if you understand this one, BPS yes. can you know replicate this one. Mm -hmm. uh, data, no problem. Exactly. I think it's not a big problem because uh, the idea is to understand the process. So whatever data is uh, available, you can uh, replicate the same process. The big difficulty is probably what we will discuss tomorrow is how to get. Uh, to, to get this nice table we've all mm -hmm. summarized, you know. Before that, there is a lot of work to be done on the real data coming from the questionnaires, uh, uh, the aggregations and uh, putting them uh, in, in this form. Once it is in this format, the, the process of calculating the, the thresholds, et cetera, that's what I think Ida will show now. Uh, mm -hmm. 
And uh, tomorrow probably we'll have a more, more discussion on how you really go from the plus or whatever level and aggregate everything at the holding level. Mm -hmm. So that because, uh, you need everything at the holding level. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Ida, please. We have one raise hand, Ida. Ida just to, yeah, if you yeah. And also on the third day, we will see your. Sorry? There's one question, Mahadi. Can you? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, please go ahead with your question. Mr. Mahadi, unmute and I know. Go ahead with the question. Mr. Mehdi, Mehdi Hassan Shohak, you raise hand and uh, you can you can talk to us. Just unmute yourself before that one. Oh, he has the you no. Know, it, it was by um, mistake, maybe. Yeah. It was that by mistake. mistake. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Aida, please go ahead. Hello, Aida. Hello. Okay, so I will. Hello, I have with the PowerPoint. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Did, uh, hello, I have a question. Yes. yes. Um, uh, you, uh, we know that the threshold level uh, land it uh, operating land depend on operating land and uh, livestock etc. Uh, and also have a revenue status threshold. Uh, my question is here that. Uh, only uh, we uh, convert operated and livestock into revenue uh, revenue for uh, measuring uh, threshold. Is it uh, this uh, household is uh, 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 small scale or big scale food producer? Okay, so let's see if I understood. You have three variables, no? You have the yeah, 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 land size, uh, livestock size, so operated land, TLUs, yeah, and yeah. revenues. You you determine the three variables, and then you have to define a threshold, identify a threshold for each of these variables, each one. Uh, then you you combine the three. So you consider as small only the farmers that satisfy the three thresholds, all the three. And all the rest are non-small. So the indicator uh, will be computed by small and non-small. And, and you divide this group uh, with the next step that I will illustrate. So identifying three thresholds. One oh, per... Uh, suppose, uh, uh, think about this one, one variable mm -hmm. is uh, 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 one variable is uh, uh, non-small. Mm -hmm. uh, another uh, two is small. Okay. In this far farm, uh, we uh, where we calculate it or uh, fall it small scale or uh, yeah uh, big scale. Sorry. Oh. Mm -hmm. So in this is non-small, and then you have the rest that is small. In this case, you will have a non-small, so a big farm. You have to yeah. satisfy the thick criteria, but I this will be shown in the, the presentation. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I, thank I you, suggest thank you. we go through the presentation, and probably you will. It will be more clear with the practical. Uh, Mm -hmm. So you will see. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank uh, you. Uh, okay, Ida. Uh, and then, yeah, if you have questions, you can go oh, oh, a bit quick on the steps now, and then we can see everything in Excel. So we we said we saw how to prepare data. No, now the step one, uh, yeah. and and then step uh, two is the computation of thresholds to identify small scale food producers. So uh, for the land threshold,
These are the steps. We will see it in practice in Excel. Things with respect to the total operated land. So we, you will order the holdings from the smallest in terms of operated land to the biggest. Then you accumulate the land. So you compute the accumulated distribution of the operated land, meaning that you take the first element, then the second uh, sum to the first. first and so on then and identify the corresponding land i will show you how, how this work and then the corresponding holding area is the threshold that will allow you to identify small holders so divide small holders for non-small holders with respect to the operated land The same is done for the TLU information. You rank holdings by the TLU from the, the, the holding with the, the smallest number of TLU to the holding with the biggest number of TLU. You accumulate the distribution and you take the 40% of this accumulated distribution and you will check what is the number of TLU that correspond to this 40%. And this will give the threshold to identify small scale food producers with respect to livestock. The same approach is adopted for revenues. I, I go a bit quick here because I will show this in Excel and it will be much, much clearer. And then once you have these three thresholds, you go to step three. So you combine the three thresholds to identify small scale food producer. That will be the, the, the food producer that satisfy the three thresholds at the same time. So uh, this answer to, to the question we just received. So if a farmer satisfy only two thresholds, but not one, it will not be classified as small scale food producer. So let's see, I will stop sharing the PowerPoint and I will share the uh, Excel file. And we see now how to continue. So here I have consolidated the data to uh, identify small holder. Now I have to identify the threshold for operated land the threshold for TLUs and the threshold for total revenues. So let's go to the, the first one, the land size. So here I have, first I have sorted my farms. You see that you don't have any more P1, P2, P3, P4, but the farm are sorted by the land size so the operated land size in hectares and this for example in excel is done very uh, simply by um, highlighting these columns then going to data you sort sort and then you say okay you have column Column B, column C, you say sort by, you select this, and now I, I will know by which you want to sort your the largest. And this will give you the, the, the land uh, sorted. Then you compute the accumulated distribution. So the first element will simply be, sorry. Mm, the first element will be equal to the first element. Then you have the second one that is equal to the second plus the, the first, so the, the, the one that is above. Then you have the second plus the sum of the first two, which is here. And, and this for, for all. So this is the accumulated distribution. The last element of the accumulated distribution is the maximum value of the accumulated distribution. So I, I took this value, this one, okay? And I brought it here okay then i want to identify the 40 percent of the accumulated distribution so i take this this value you see h3 so the maximum and i multiply it by 0 0.4 okay so and i get 101 so i go here and i check okay where i have a value that is smaller than 101. If I go here, for example, I don't have any more accumulated value that is smaller than 101. So this is the last possible one, okay? And uh, so this means that the land size 
that corresponds to the 40% of the accumulated land size is 5.3. So this 5.3 is my thresholds in terms of land. So basically here, what I've done first of all is with uh, uh, an if uh, value is smaller than the 40%, put one, otherwise put zero. Okay, and I have applied this to all cells. Okay. And I will take as threshold of operated land, the, 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 the operated land of the holding, the last holding for which I have one. Okay, so that the accumulated land size is smaller than the uh, 40%. So this is my threshold, 5.3. I do the same for the livestock. So what do I do? I first uh, sort the holdings with respect to the number of TLUs. So these are all my holdings. You see, again, I don't have P1, P2, P3, but holdings are sorted by the uh, number of TLU. I compute the accumulated distribution. So I take the first element, then the second element plus the accumulated value above, then the third element plus the uh, accumulated value above and so on. I take here, I take the maximum accumulated value, you see 182.3 is this, is this maximum value. I compute the 40% of this maximum value. Okay. And uh, Taking uh, as a reference this 40%, I look, okay, is this accumulated value uh, minor than this 40%? If yes, I put one. If no, I put zero. And I look for the last farmer with one here. And this is the threshold in terms of TLU. Okay, it's not the accumulated value, but it's the size of operated land that corresponds to that specific accumulated value uh, of land. Okay, and so the, basically the, per, per the number of smallholders with respect to livestock will be given by uh, all these. So all those that are small with respect to the threshold identified. Right. Then I go to revenues and I, sorry, I go to revenues and I do exactly the same. So first I rank with respect to revenue. I compute the accumulated distribution, identify the maximum value of the accumulated distribution and then the 40% of it. And identify the last farm that has accumulated distribution of revenues smaller than this 40% and the corresponding value, like not accumulated value, but the corresponding value of revenues is my threshold for the revenues. Okay, so I have now three threshold. One for the land size, which is 5.3, one for livestock that is four, and one for uh, the revenues that is uh, $3,600 more or less. Okay. So here I summarize my threshold. I put, again, I, I took this consolidated data here and I put them here. And then again, with an if function, I, I, say, I ask, okay, if, uh, for example, if uh, uh, the operated land is minor or equal to 5.3 or the TLU is minor or equal to four, or the revenues is minor or equal to this, put one, otherwise put zero. And, and doing this for all the cells, I identify those that satisfy all the three conditions and this will be my small holders. Aida, is it or or end, please? Sorry. Is it or uh, or end? It's end, 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 yeah, yeah. end, sorry. You see here, it's... Uh, if and so this is the way you ask uh, to Excel to check all the three condition and see that they check if they are all satisfied. So it's and. Yeah. Thank it's, you, yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Can I just can I can I ask a question? Of Previously, course. you you have assigned one and zero to you know all the three variables. Mm -hmm. uh, can we can we use the, those three variables to combine the final you know small scale one? Of course, it's the same. On yes. condition, if all are three, that will be you know. Yeah, yeah, of storage. course, of course, yes. Otherwise, you know, can, uh, using this, you know, creating this column won't help. Um, although, sorry. Um, you are you have already created one and zero everywhere. Yeah, so but this, the, mm -hmm. with one condition, if all are the one, then you can regard it as a, a small number. Yeah, you you can try, but I think it's not the same because this one condition is based on the accumulated distribution. You see, and it only uh, serves to identify five point three. Okay, but yes, I think you you can you can because all these land are uh, smaller than five point three. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yes, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amir, you are right. It, 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 both can work. Huh? Yes, possible. both yeah, can yes, work. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you can also, yes, combine this one and you see which holding have all this one. Of course, just one, one consideration, the, the ranking of holdings will be different. Like here you have the holding with uh, the ranking with respect to the operated land. So the, the one, like the, the ED is different. Then here you have a ranking with respect to TLU and here you have a ranking with respect to revenues. And this is why uh, it was easier to look at a new consolidated data set uh, with no ranking, let's say. And also like Excel is just a, a tool that I use for this exercise. You don't need necessarily to use Excel. You can use any any software of your choice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, it's okay. I think you, know, you may proceed now. So yeah. I think um, I finished the presentation. So now it's uh, it's open for questions if there are any. Okay. Uh, Either, do you also foresee that uh, they try to, the participant try, or we just go to the questions? So uh, we have two possibilities. Either they try now to replicate. So I sent two files before the break. One is this one that we have seen. One is a similar file, but with empty, some empty columns to check whether you, you are able to reproduce the, the steps that I've implemented. So we can either uh, try, uh, you can either try now to, to reproduce this exercise or perhaps this after, like uh, for tomorrow, uh, if it's too late now, man, it's up to you. So what time do, what time do we have left? Uh, it's uh, 14, 14 minutes left. Mm -hmm. 14 minutes. Uh, Amrul, what, what do you think? Uh, I think, you know, let us consider this as the homework of the, for the participants. Mm -hmm. they, you know, this is a simple Excel, let them try. And tomorrow, exactly. uh, first few few minutes, we'll you know discuss you know where, mm -hmm. where the, someone find any problem or not, something like that. Okay, that's a good idea. So uh, let's uh, take uh, let's say uh, I don't know how many minutes, thirty minutes, or is it too much? We have thirty minutes will be too much. You know, twenty will be fine <laughs> because problem will be similar actually. So we give uh, the participant. Uh, a few minutes to, to try to reproduce this, uh, what Ida has shown. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, we, we come with questions. Okay. No, I, I, think, I, I think Amirul is suggesting this exercise as a homework for that, so that they can do the exercise. And tomorrow morning, before we start the new session, we just review that. I think that's what you are saying, Amiru. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just mentioned that one. Yeah, as a homework. Okay. You want, yeah. wanted this thing to be as a homework, okay? Okay, Therefore, so the I, rest I, of the time we go for the questions. Yes. Because we have still a few few time left, no? A little bit of time left. Okay, so let's go for questions. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, you can try to exercise on your computer eh, in parallel, and then you can 
identify the, the difficulties and the questions so that you ask the questions. But uh, we leave it for, for you to try uh, today and uh, report to tomorrow morning. Uh, so any, any questions from your side? I see something here. Could you please we, email uh, us? We, you have uh, you have sent this uh, calculation in the Excel file, but would you please uh, could you please send us a do file uh, with the data? Is it possible? You mean as data data? You mean a data script? Status uh, script. Status do file. Status mm -hmm. status scripts. Yeah. Uh, we can calculate it in Excel file, okay, but we, we need do file. For, for large file, it would be better for uh, start file. So I, I need a do file as for an example. If you send mm -hmm. us do file. With okay, data. so we, we have, uh, yeah. So we, we don't have um, a do file like specific to a, a data set. We have a data template. So a do file that is a generic data do file that you will have to adapt to your specific data. So that we can do. We can share a data template. Yeah, I, I, I think you know, uh, Mister. Uh, the, the, the With issue some is command the, that you can the, you can you know customize to your specific survey. Yeah, the issue. Uh, is, you, you can uh, you can give us any data, any data, in the in the context of uh, two point three point one, any data, and with the do file. When we follow this, we can calculate in our context. We will manage this. Okay. Now, uh, can, can I? Can I? Can, can you? Can you can please send the, the data in Excel, and uh, you 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 remember the 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 routine that uh, Piero's team has yeah. that you shared, yeah. which is uh, maybe that can be shared also, because this is a public, no? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I was saying that uh, there is a state template uh, mm -hmm. that we can share, but that's not, uh, let's say, specific of what, for one data set. It's just that template that then Listen, they will need to customize. You can use Danny data for a, for an example. Then we can follow it, and mm -hmm. we will apply it in our context. Uh, in our data, we can follow it uh, because uh, in a when the data set is uh, large, then it will handle in a okay. Excel file. Uh, it's complex. We'll so, do it sure. in con yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we will uh, prepare something. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think let's do this now, man. Uh, this is a specific question. This training has been organized. It's a general mm -hmm. training type of thing, okay? Therefore, some country you do a starter, some other doesn't do. And it's it was not like, you know, one size fits all. For Bangladesh, mm -hmm. you it comes to be like starter, for instance. But this can, might not be applied to some other countries. But, but here in the training, we are giving the conceptual in that they know that how to, to compute these things without yeah. being specific to the software. But since you are really interested in uh, having this thing in Stata, we need to work on that one and you know, send you the, the do files as a separate thing. Uh, I think there is already a standard generic uh, routine uh, within the, the, the uh, with uh, Piero that they are sharing with countries. I'm, uh, I'm right. Yes. Uh, yes. So this is one. And start, uh, Ida has a routine. Mm -hmm. So we can just share this. This is the, the, the public uh, FAO routine that they are sharing. So uh, any country can read it and put it in any format they want. Mm -hmm. uh, translate in, uh, in R, in uh, whatever it is. But it at least show the, the process and the, the protocol to follow to identify the small holder. Yeah. That's a public, uh, public uh, product of FAO. No? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I think we. Yeah. yeah we... Anyway, tomorrow also we will. Uh, talk about this, uh, but you are right. Uh, can share something. This yeah. was just a demonstration. This was just uh, for Excel, Excel for, I don't know, 
10, 15, 20, 30 holders, but we know that in real surveys, you have thousands and thousands of holders. So uh, Excel is certainly not the tool to, to use for this work. So you will need to work out uh, the, the specific uh, package in order to, to, to do all the, the work that is needed in order to compute. Now, FAO in parallel, I think Jacob can elaborate more, is also working on a, a even better uh, package. It's not yet completely adopted, but that will facilitate this calculation of the indicators. So uh, certainly in, in, in some time, countries will have a, a package that will uh, facilitate a lot the computation of these indicators. But in the meantime, the focus is, is here to, to show the process, uh, how you, you calculate uh, the, the threshold, how you identify the smallholders, et cetera. And then you can translate this into a specific uh, language of a computer language that you are familiar with. Now, may I suggest something here, you know? Uh, yes. As, as you know, we have already uh, exercised the Excel one, and we have three days, you know, training. But uh, suddenly we cannot, you know, incorporate this data here. But as the, as proposed by Mr. Tawid Islam, if you have any uh, data set that is handled by you know Stata, so along with the data and the code that you share, that will give the guide for the for those who want to use uh, yeah. that actually. Mm -hmm. So that you can you know share later on. But for the time being, as you have planned on Excel, so you can proceed with Excel so that. Uh, so far, I understand, you know, all the methodology, how the uh, how to calculate, how to you know, condition these, you know, uh, variables. These are very much straightforward. We can understand easily. So, if you understand this logic, uh, anyone who knows this uh, spaces or stata or in R or something, like that, they can yeah. easily yeah. find their code. But if you provide this code, that will be ready-made actually to uh, to just jump into the data actually. That will help. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, they should have to try and error uh, some some codes, uh, play around. Uh, that you can play, uh, prepare, and uh, we have time. You can share after this training as well, if you, mm -hmm. if you are okay. 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 So, are we at the end of the time? We are uh, nearly, nearly, you know, nearly to the five minutes yeah. left. We can just, you know, save, save. Quality day actually, if you want to. Okay. So, if there is uh, no more questions for the time being, so the data will be shared with you by Ida. And then tomorrow morning, uh, if some, some people have tried to, to, to reproduce the process, if they are willing to, to present some results or to, to ask for more, some clarifications, we can allow some few time to do that. For tomorrow, <laughs> so tonight. They yeah, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, and before we close, you know, I request Ida to just you know whatever you share with the participants, please also include my email, so okay. that I can also have those. You know, because currently okay. I don't have any you know any data or anything you share. Ah, okay. So. Uh, and, 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 yeah. and for you know uh, for you know Naman's you know information, yeah. lately we have a one you know one and a nomination from Minister of Food. I have just forwarded that link to uh, to the person, but I will share that email to with you so that you can include in your list. Okay, I have I have shared the latest list that I had before uh, we start the meeting, and uh, if someone can check that list to to make sure that. Uh, yeah, I will check. I will check. And do you need yeah. the you know a designation of all of the participants, or you need the email addresses only? Uh, the the emails also. We need all the information. Okay. Okay. Then I will as well. Naman, uh, in the file which I sent you, you have a list of participants with the email addresses. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll do that one because, you know. Yeah, there were some uh, few participants that uh, uh, Islam sent yesterday. I had the email and the telephone numbers, but I did not have the names and the titles. Oh, no, and... I, I, I deliberately didn't share with you because it will, it will create confusion. There is a... If there is no more questions, I think it's time now to, to conclude the, the, the session. To me, it has been a very, very interesting session because a uh, day at least. Uh, with, that's what we really wanted to have, a, an interactive session, not just 
to come and do lectures and things like that. But this is an interaction between the experts in Bangladesh and the experts from FAO. So that we don't have the answer to all the questions. And as we progress, we also learn from you. And uh, we, we try to, to refine and we take note of the, the questions. I hope that the rest of the two days we'll do the, we'll have the same type of uh, sessions and uh, yeah. we have taken note uh, very carefully of uh, the, the, the very relevant questions that have been asked. And I think that the presentation of Haida was also well received. So we stop here and uh, see you tomorrow morning. Uh, tomorrow yeah, afternoon. Yeah, I'll, request, tomorrow. I'll request the participants, please try this Excel, Excel uh, file. Yes, on your own no if you have any problem we'll share tomorrow so this is learning learning by doing so as we are on a zoom platform we are not you know in person so it will help if you just also spend some time personal time here and again yeah, we, and i will request i will request our FA colleagues to address all of the questions you know whatever question is raised and it will you know clarify the whole you know, confusion around the indicators so far today it was a it was a good session i will i expect that this will continue for the further two days and uh, with these okay. words, uh, let us let us say uh, say goodbye and call it a day. Hope to see you tomorrow. Okay. okay. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a nice evening. Bye.